Bone roll orientation and positioning are super important to get a nice rig, but you may not always get a model in a perfect T pose to ease the process. Or you might be working on a complex rig like a robot with various joints with tons of different orientations. I'm Pierre Rig from P2 Design and here are some bones manipulation tips and tricks to build the perfect armatures. Here's a first example to illustrate the problem. You will generally rely on the topology to position the bone. So I like to enable the wireframe when I'm rigging. Why this character is nice? Because I made it, so it's nice. His relaxed pose is not ideal to rig. For example, the feet are not aligned with world space. And if I want to create a foot roll mechanism, it's gonna be hard for me to define a nice bone roll on which my rotations will depend. To better illustrate the problem and the solutions, I will use this little robot arm from a project I'm working on. While it looks nice, it's not T-posed, the fingers are not aligned, and the joint that serves as an elbow doesn't point in the Y direction. It's not aligned with world space. So let's see how we can get perfect bone positioning and orientation on this arm. When you create a new rig, it's better to have both your mesh and your armature centered in world space. Since whatever you add in Blender will be added on the 3D cursor, you can center the 3D cursor pressing Shift C. From there, you can add a bone that will be your root bone. The first important thing when rigging is to use the correct transform pivot point. And the most useful is the individual origin. With this pivot point, when you edit a bone, it will rotate around its head. And this is the actual pivot point of a bone. When I'm rigging, I generally set my bone viewport display in front and I switch their shading to wire. As said before, you should rely on the topology of your character or model to place your bones. Here I want to place the arm bone, the root of the arm that should be the connection between the shoulder and the arm. The method is pretty simple, you place the 3D cursor where you want to add the bone and from where the bone should be rotating. In the case of that model, that could be tempting to use those two opposite vertices on each side. But this is not a perfect sphere, so the 3D cursor won't be centered on that sphere. So in this specific case, it will be better to use this loop that goes around the mesh. Then I can press Shift S to snap the cursor and then you can go back into edit mode onto your armature and add a new bone. So in this case, I'm relying on a hard surface mesh to snap my cursor. This way, I'm sure that my bones are perfectly positioned. For the next joint, the elbow, the base mesh is a cylinder, so I can snap the cursor to the middle of the cylinder by selecting its pole and snapping the third cursor to it. Then go back in edit mode onto my armature and snap the tail of the bone onto the 3D cursor. And then I can extrude another bone that will be the forearm and snap it to the wrist geometry. So you get the idea when it comes to art surface modeling, just rely on the model to perfectly position your bones. When you are rigging organic character, you can rely on the topology too. Most of the time you will find accurate landmarks but you're free to tweak the positioning of the bones after the skinning. So basically your workflow should be to position the bones, then weight paint your character, and then slightly tweak bone positioning if you feel like an elbow is too high or too low, for example. When you're posing your character, you generally want to use the local transform orientation, the one from the bone. We know that the positioning of the elbow is perfect, so let's rotate it around the X axis. It feels pretty nice, but if we take a closer look to it in front view, for example, we are rotating from the right position, but we are not correctly following the orientation of the elbow. And when I switch to X-ray, we can see the elbow shifting left to right, instead of perfectly rotating around the cylinder. And the problem here is not the bone positioning, but the bone roll. Here I have two bones with the same orientation. The orientation is the direction they are pointing in. But the bones don't have the same role. The role is the rotation around the y-axis. You can call it twisting if you want. And you can check the role value in edit mode. If I switch to pose mode and I rotate those two bones around the x-axis, the first bone that was aligned with world space and with a bone roll of zero has nice and predictable rotations value. 
And while the second bone seems to have the same orientation, its rotation value are all around. And it's gonna be a pain for the animator to work with that. What rotation axis should I use to rotate my elbow, for example? Luckily, we can edit the bone roll in edit mode. You can play with the transform value directly in the item panel, or you can press Ctrl R to edit the bone roll in the 3D viewport. The bone roll can be also automatically recalculated. You can press Shift N and choose between different options. The positive and negative option does a perfect job when your bones are aligned with world space. Or if you already have a bone with a perfect roll, what you can do is use it as being the reference bone. But what to do when our bones don't fit any of those cases, like on this arm for example? Well, you generally know that you want your axis to point toward the elbow for example, or perpendicular to the elbow. So in that case, our bone is aligned with those two opposite poles and it will be rotating around this axis. Now to get the perfect roll on this one, I will snap the 3D cursor to one of the poles, then I will exit edit mode, select my bones, enter edit mode, let me completely mess up the roll pressing Ctrl R and doing it manually, and I will then press Shift N to recalculate the roll and choose 3D cursor. Now look how the local z-axis of my bone will point toward the 3D cursor. And if I now switch to pose mode, rotate the forearm bone along its z-local axis, I get a perfect rotation. With this method, whenever you have a single axis rotation, you are 100% sure that you will have the perfect bone roll. And animators will thank you for that. Now if you're working on an organic character, Instead of trying to find the axis around which you will be rotating, you may want to use the elbow or the knee, for example. In this case, I can use this edge that crossed the middle of the elbow, snap the cursor to it, then select my forearm bone, recalculate the roll choosing the 3D cursor. And now, if I rotate the elbow around the X axis, it's going to be perfect. But when you're rigging a chain, it's better to use the Z axis as the rotation axis. So I can press Ctrl R again and enter 90 degrees or minus 90 degrees so that my X axis points forward. Now you may ask why I prefer to rotate around the Z axis. Well, because in the case of an inverse kinematics chain, if you're using a pull target, the root of the chain will use its local x-axis to point at the pull target. And I won't have any offset when I assign the pull target, because my bone roll, or my x-axis of the chain, was pointing at the pull target. If I change the bone roll, you can see that now we have an offset, and we have to tweak that and fix it using the pull angle. That's not a big deal, but it's not ideal. So it's not mandatory, but that's good practice. And also, by default, the Euler rotation order is using the Z axis as the master rotation axis. The first axis to be evaluated in the X, Y, Z Euler rotation. And this leads us to our last point. Whenever you want to manipulate bones in edit mode to move them, let's say I want to create a pull target. If I use local as the transform orientation, it's not the local axis of the bone, it's the local axis of the armature. If I want to move this bone along its X axis, in edit mode, I need to switch to normal. And now I can move it along its local X axis, I can offset it along its local Y axis, so that it stays in its local X axis plane, and if I quickly set up an inverse kinematic constraint and I use this as a pull target, I won't have any twisting in the inverse kinematic chain, I won't have to tweak the pull angle value, and if I lock the X and Y rotation axis on the forearm, I will get a perfect elbow behavior. And my mechanical joint or organic joint will always be perfectly aligned. This is the end of this video, I hope you learned something new and I'll see you in the next one.